Good morning, viewers, and welcome to a double shot of bulletins today on the Angry Astronaut coming to you here in Tennessee, just an amazing place in Nashville. I haven't really spent a lot of time here in the past, amazingly, even though I've lived for the last quarter century in the South, but in any event, that's what's going on at the moment here with my son and need to get these things knocked out before we enjoy the day. But big things happening in space flight, which absolutely need to be covered as well. And the most significant of these, in my opinion, is what happened with Relativity Space about 12 hours ago. An amazing launch, an amazing accomplishment. And yeah, a lot of people would look upon what happened with Relativity Space as a failure and a long string of failures that have been happening lately. I mean, obviously, we had the failure with Firefly even though it got its payload into space, didn't get it to the proper orbit, and it uh, burned up within hours of having been deployed. And then, of course, we had the Japanese H-3. That was an awful failure. The first launch of the new Vega rocket from Arianspas, that one failed. Um, ABL's newest rocket, that one failed. And then, of course, the back-breaking failure of the Virgin Orbit Launcher 1, the first significant failure that that company experienced at least where they lost a payload. So why is this failure any different? Why can Relativity Space be happy about this failure and what they accomplished? After a truly magnificent launch, I found myself celebrating alongside all the Relativity Space staff as I watched this new Terran 1 rocket climb into the sky, hoping against hope that this would become the first methylox-powered rocket to actually reach orbit. And here's the main difference between what happened yesterday with Relativity Space and what happened with all of the other recent failures. Realistic expectations were set right from the get-go. If you listen to what the commentators were saying in every previous launch attempt, especially during the failed launch attempts, the expectation in general was to reach Max-Q and hopefully Miko before the rocket would actually fail. Very few people at Relativity Space and observers in general expected this rocket to actually make it to orbit because, let's face it, nobody really succeeds on their first try in this industry. SpaceX most definitely did not. Virgin Orbit amazingly managed to get to orbit on their second attempt, which is very unusual. ABL failed, obviously. So did Firefly. And so did Japan with their H-3 rocket. The difference being that Japan expected the H-3 to make it to orbit and to flawlessly deploy its extremely expensive payload. Relative Relativity Space had no such misconceptions. They knew that this rocket, brand new, untested, and using a lot of new technology and new 3D printed parts, wasn't very likely to get to orbit on the first try. And it was very obvious what Relativity Space's actual expectations and definition of success were the moment the rocket managed to pass through Max-Q. Max-Q. to play today. You just heard that call out indicating Terran 1 just made it through. Max Q. So now that I've managed to ruin the life of every dog across the planet, I think it's very clear to everybody just what Relativity Space was really expecting out of this launch, not an orbital success. And the fact that they managed to achieve Miko and the fact that the second stage ignited it all was very impressive, again, on the first try, especially with such a brand new piece of equipment utilizing new technology, not 
least of which is methyloxed and staged combustion propulsion. This is, after all, rocket science. And now that Relativity Space managed to achieve all of these milestones on their first launch, I don't think it's going to be very difficult for them to secure funding for future attempts and for their future business plans. If the rocket had blown up on the pad or if it had failed to reach max Q, that would have been a different story. But overall, this rocket performed extremely well. It would be nice if the media would recognize that a little bit. I haven't seen a whole lot of stories that seem to relate those facts, but it doesn't really matter because those are the facts. Relativity Space did very well. However, it's important also to note what this test was not. And what it was not was a test that catapulted Relativity Space into the world of competitive spaceflight because they're definitely not there yet. Relativity Space is not in a position to be carrying payloads to orbit anytime really soon. It's going to be several months, perhaps even as long as a year before Relativity Space can realistically attempt to try to reach orbit again. And during that time, competitors like SpaceX and especially Rocket Lab are going to continue piling up successful launch after successful launch, becoming well-established and trusted players in the competitive spaceflight arena, and it's probably going to take Relativity Space at least three or four launches before people really start trusting them and are willing to pay their $12 million per launch price point. Now that is ridiculously competitive for Terran 1. That's a capability of carrying over 1.2 metric tons to orbit for $12 million. That's pretty mind-boggling, actually. Four times the payload capability of a Rocket Lab Electron for only double the price. Do the math. It's a really good solution. But the thing of it is, Relativity Space is not yet ready to bring that solution to the public. And that being the case, they're not going to be able to compete realistically against Rocket Lab or SpaceX for at least a year or two. So they are behind the times. And that's the case with just about every competitive launch provider at the moment and a very high hill for them to climb. Now I have every expectation that Relativity Space is going to be successful. Their technology looks very promising. The success, well, in my opinion, the success that they experienced yesterday is proof of that. And it was far more impressive than what some of their competitors have been able to pull off lately, especially <coughs> Astra. <coughs> And more importantly, yesterday's flight demonstrates that Relativity Space is very unlikely to get the Terran R off the ground anytime really soon, certainly not in 2024, and also their planned mission to Mars is very far in the future. So Relativity Space still has a long ways to go, and I really admire their ambitions, and I really like their aggressive timeline, but like Elon time, I really don't think it's likely to happen on their schedule. However, that having been said, I have every confidence that this company is going to be a major player in competitive space flight in the future, and I can't wait to see their next launch, hopefully this time in person. Please smash that like, hit that subscribe, also check the description for various ways to support my content, especially my upcoming trips to Huntsville, Alabama, and to Boca Chica, and as always, stay angry about space!